What's up, all you toy collectors and action figure enthusiasts? It is time for another episode of Alternate Heads, the Toy Talking (laughs) Podcast. And I'm going to start this off by saying, if you're 13 years of age or younger, go ahead and leave the room, go get a parent, and make sure you watch it with them, because we are not for children. And by that, I'm going to go ahead and say, fuck. Oh! Uh, well, since we have to conform to YouTube's uh, thing about cursing and everything, I think all that's I, out the window, considering that we are not a family show, a kid show. Now, you don't know a whole lot about what's going on. No, please uh, inform me. Basically, and we'll, we'll knock part of this out of the way and we'll make another video if we have to. Um, YouTube, about a year ago, got fined uh, through the FTC and COPPA, basically. Like, what was it? Like two like 20 million oh, it's, dollars it's a, it's a it, big it, number. it was a big, big it was a big chunk of change mm-hmm. basically something yeah. that youtube didn't like and because of that youtube has gotten extremely afraid of the ftc which has caused a lot of creators to take a huge plunge in their youtube market basically what's happening is the ftc is uh marking youtube as you know is this for kids is basically the gist of it so right. we have to look at it from now on and say, are our videos for kids? And you have to mark them as such because YouTube was advertising to kids. It was taking data and advertising to kids, which is against COPPA's laws. And it's a double-edged sword there because COPPA, the, the COPPA law is there to protect kids because, but YouTube took those, you know, that, uh, that little bit of business said, okay, well, people who are watching this particular type of video are generally kids. They're watching like Roblox or Minecraft or in cases, toys, like toys is the biggest hit. Animation's getting hit too. Uh, shows like anime TV are fine though. It's just, they took a big hit. They were taking all those and then saying, Hey, this company right here, you do toys. How about you advertise to these videos because these videos are being watched by toys, but that was against the law. But they had to do it that way, too. So that way, if I am an adult who is selling alcohol or is in the sex toy business, basically, you don't want those ads going to someone who's seven or eight or, you know, under 13, basically. Right. So it's a double edged sword. So that's what they were doing. But they got hit with that fine. So YouTube has recreated or redone its algorithms and done its thing. So now you have to be marked as for kids if your videos are technically for kids. The problem with that is it's a death sentence to most YouTubers who mark that because if it's for kids, no longer do you get any ad monetization on there. It's gone. Uh, oh. It strictly will take your video out of the algorithm. It will no longer suggest your video to anyone on YouTube. It'll make it almost impossible to find unless you are subscribed to that channel. They are disabling comments on all of those channels. So it takes away the ability to communicate with your audience. It's ultimately a death sentence because people that were, you know, big on YouTube that focused in toy reviews and stuff like that Mm. are getting hit because they made most of their living in that particular field. And because of that, they can't make any money on YouTube. So if you are a big fan of something like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or in some cases like us where we're huge fans of Power Rangers and we did main reviews on stuff like that, that's where it gets hit. So basically toy reviewers got hit the most and you have a function to mark your video as for kids. But if you mark it as not for kids and the FDC comes back and says, you know what, this video we think is for kids, regardless of what you say, They will fine you $42,000 per video that they think is not for, uh, that is supposed to be marked as for kids that you disagreed with. So everyone started panicking because what do we do? And YouTube didn't want to talk to anybody. Instead, they said, consult a lawyer if you think that this is against it. So YouTube's washed their hands of it. And it's basically kind of destroying part of the, the platform. Some of the shows like Super Cool Nerd Show and Anime TV and ricardo's like super cool nerd nation and his soon to be like booze and our new show nerds with coffee that'll come out next year those should be safe because those aren't advertised towards kids they don't have anything to do with toys they're more adult subjects right. there but shows like alternate heads are technically a little bit more viable we don't sit here and advertise everything we talk about our opinions but that's the biggest thing. So, I mean, worst case scenario, it, if anything were to happen, we would have to take alternate heads down from YouTube and find another platform for it. Right. But 
that's the worst case scenario. I don't think we'll have to because we're not the same as, you know, reviewing Ben 10 Playmates toys or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys. And, not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of people have gotten, are, are gone now because of it. JC from TNI News is gone. He's uh, officially marked all of his videos for kids. He's lost all of his revenue stream. And now he has to move to a different platform if he wants to continue. Uh, I think Floosh is gone as well. He stopped making videos. He's now doing everything exclusively through Patreon for the time being. Uh, I laughed though, because he said he may have a deal going with Pornhub. <laughs> so, I mean, why not? Bizarre. Uh, so that, so that there, there was, there, there was at least one kid and there's probably multiple. I, I remember reading somewhere that, that kids doing toy reviews was raking in the dollars. Yeah. Some of Big them were. Bucks. That's the big thing is like, it's hard to differentiate the people who do certain toy reviews, whatever they were going to fall so, uh, to do certain toy reviews between us who talk about the action figure community that are for young adults to older adults to a seven year old who's doing, who also buys maybe some similar figures that they like with us and is doing their reviews and getting very popular because those younger kids are relating to those younger kids and it's that particular audience. So if that's the case those particular type of videos are now marked as for kids. So any of those kids who were doing toy reviews will no longer be able to make revenue off of it, period, as well. So those are all gone. So much for that college fund. Yeah, it's it's gone. Yeah. Completely. Well, by the way, I'm Bryce. Thanks for tuning in to Alternate Heads. <laughs> and with me to my left is... The Cynical Near. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I'm so angry. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> That's weird. I've seen bullshit like this come and go from YouTube. Yeah, but it's never been to this extent where YouTube has basically been so afraid that even though they were the ones who needed to take responsibility for what they were doing, they basically shoved it all on the creators. Granted, they took a heavy fine. Oh, yeah. And But the, the fact is, that is not on us. This should be totally on them to, to police their own platform and not say, hey, creators, if you get sued, hey, we're sorry, we're, we're, we're out. Um, but I think honestly, we're just going to say we're not particularly aimed at children. No, we weren't. And we, they we probably cursed. shouldn't watch our channel, but you know, I'm, I'm not leaving the platform. I'm not going to panic like everybody else did. The only thing that pr problem I see is the FTC is not a big organization. Have I been saying FD or FT? You've been, I hope you've been saying FTC. Well, let's pretend I have been, if I've been saying FD. Okay. The Federal Trade Commission isn't a large organization, and by no means do they have the manpower to look at every single YouTube channel that is out there and say, okay, no, no. Well, that's why they've started no. targeting really bigger people first, the ones that have the biggest thing. We met Pixel Dan at uh, yeah, Retro Palooza. No, now, have we got reports of anybody that has taken a channel hit? Him. So that, that's my first example was, or one of my first ones is Pixel Dan officially has like half of his videos that were instantly marked as for kids by them. Like they went through his channel and officially said anything that had to do with certain figures had to automatically get marked as for kids. So for Pixel Dan, anything that had to do with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, regardless if it was by Bandai or uh, Playmates, I don't know who makes those, but even his NECA ones were officially marked as for kids because of the particular title name that's associated with Nickelodeon because that particular station's designated for kids. So he had to go in and mark down certain ones that he thought were for kids. So he's already lost all the revenue stream on those. While I think He-Man was okay, I want to say a lot of his other figure reviews did just fine, but there were also a lot of them that he went through that were, that were dear to him that still got hit and because of that he's taken a huge hit from that you know particular now, set of restrictions I, I do not agree with them going out and just saying well we're saying that this channel is aimed at and clearly it's not yeah a lot of youtubers make their career and uh, living but, on here but the ftc didn't do that no youtube did that so once again this is on youtube yeah, FTC didn't go through and order YouTube, change all that guy's videos. And once again, YouTube is doing a knee-jerk reaction to things. And I don't know. And plus, okay, so what? They got a $150 million hit. This is Google. They, they Somebody, a, a high corporate guy is not going to be on Vine Island this year. Okay? 
Y'all shouldn't have been collecting data and not being upfront about it. The, the biggest, yeah. some of the biggest issues that people are seeing is the fact that YouTube for so long in order to have your channel be truly marketable and truly beneficial is the fact that if you had to be family friendly, but now if you were so family friendly, now you're considered kid appropriate, which made it so you had to lose all of your market and all of your, all of the pay that you could be getting from being on YouTube. So you have to, to be profitable, you have to be non-family friendly yet family friendly. We'll find that balance with all of our other shows the same way we normally have. And if we have to mark down alternate heads as not for kids on the title card, and then we'll do that. It's just, you know, this particular one is the one that's going to probably take the biggest hit. But like I said, we, maybe we'll change some stuff up and we'll put down like a disclaimer saying, hey, look, there's a lot of cursing. This is not for kids. Like don't <laughs> don't watch this show. They don't watch the show unless you are like 14 up or 13 up. I don't know what age restriction it is, but like that's just the thing that's gonna have to be while all of our other shows will still remain the family friendly style that they kind of have already been aimed towards young adults we'll just have to actually put the disclaimer for this one and what's sad is like going through our videos i don't see which ones instantly or or have been pegged for kids yet i have to go through everything so. yeah you'd have to go through them all but one of the worst things about the internal guidelines and most of the stuff doesn't hit till january um, there is a link that you could officially follow. I'll, I'll give it to you, Jason, before the video goes up, then you can put it in the description where you can actually go and voice your comments and concerns to the FTC. So you'll have that option to do it, uh, because most of the stuff doesn't hit till January, but even in YouTube's guidelines, because of how afraid that they've been because of how much they've taken a hit, YouTube can now go in and look at individual channels. And if the channel isn't marked as potential for profitability, they can delete your YouTube channel now. So anyone who doesn't have like an instant jump to success and has been using YouTube could possibly just be gone tomorrow. It's just, that's not okay. Nope. No. So anyway, that's terrible. We're going to wait and we're, we're taking an, um, a wait and see approach. Right. So we'll, we'll go from there. You know, it's a shame we have to interrupt good toy talk for this type of, Bullshit. Boy, some people are really going to take it in the shorts. So anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and kick it off with talking about some toys. So acquisitions on the table for this week. It has been a slow week for me, and that and is a shame. And me. It, you and I collect the same stuff. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe your Luke has fallen. Your Cara Dune has fallen. Yeah, a lot of figures have fallen off the... But that puck is still standing. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I only got two cameras, guys. Something's up. I, I gotta go through. He's a real pro. That yeah. puck. <laughs> it, the the puck is still standing on one end. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, just. I got the Alpha Flight pack off of Amazon this week. Uh, Hundred bucks, six figures. They're all pretty good. I know uh, some results may vary. Yeah. I went on and got uh, Sasquatch and Guardian out just to complete have, it. Just so I can say there's. A, I have a full Alpha Flight team, which is not something I thought I would be saying in my life ever. <laughs> I, I, figured, I didn't think I'd ever see it. I figured they would happen eventually because it looks like they were kind of ramping it up by giving us more and more and consecutive waves, especially for X-Men figures. But yeah, you, you were right. Because I also got the Alpha Flight team. I picked it up whenever it was available for pre-order day one. I, I went ahead and I pre-ordered it, got all six figures. They shipped recently. I was really excited about it. And <laughs> I got mine in Friday. Opened it up. First figure I pulled out was North Star, and my limbs were all sorts of jacked up. Like, you would move it, and th there was no tightness to any of them. It was unposable, unplayable on anything that you could think of it. So I, I called Amazon, and I was like, look, this just isn't going to work. You need to send me a new one. And they were like, okay, we'll, we'll do a return exchange. So they sent me a new one. I have a new uh Puck new is set. still standing. <laughs> I I have a new set. I can't. Uh, I don't have it here, obviously, because otherwise Jason and I would never figure out well, whose figures are who. But I, yeah, the Alpha Flight team is really good. I like it a lot. I love. I like the fact that I was not into collecting when Puck came out originally. I now have Puck. And I didn't have to wait to build them as a build a figure. Oh, I did actually have one more because this came in while um, right after we filmed Alternate Heads. Uh, Oh, that's right, because you complained about it. Yeah, I was mad as hell about it. But I did get the Fans Toys uh, Jabber. This is a third-party blur from the Transformers movie. Uh, you remember uh, the guy that talked real fast in the Micro Machine commercials? He did the voice of this character. Cool. 
So it's very it's it's very good. Unfortunately, the company that makes these has complicated ass transformations. <laughs> he has been kind of in car mode, but otherwise, it's a really good figure and it completes the uh, movie shelf. Jason, I I'm noticed very happy uh, to get this guy. I noticed that your Optimus was back out of car mode. How how long did that take? <sighs> um, the uh, MP44 Optimus Prime. You know what? It's actually easier after you do it a couple of times. I laugh more at, we were doing a 24 hour live stream to help out charity for extra life. Tora's doing some kind of game on the stream and over in the corner, it's me and Jason just messing around. I'm watching some kind of video or I'm doing artwork for something. And Jason's like, you know what? I feel like transforming my Optimus into car mode an hour in. I have never seen Jason sweat so hard, look so depressed, look so angry. He's mumbling. He's like, what kind of asshole? would buy such a car why who would spend money on this figure and cora's in the corner like yeah who would spend money on that figure and he's like i don't know i don't understand i listened to the same youtube video four times in the span this is, of this is the reason i do masterpiece transform tour reviews to document the transformations in case i need to go back <laughs> he kept going back and forth and he was just like i don't i don't get it i don't understand <laughs> So he had a meltdown? He had a meltdown. He finished right before Cat and Cast took over the stream. And he left it there. And I looked him in the face and went, hey, can I get you to transform that back for me? And he went, get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> also, I know you picked him up, but I got the IG-11. Because I've watched The Mandalorian. Oh, and... so good. <laughs> so, must get everything from The Mandalorian. So, um, Matt, If we go to back to new acquisitions, since me and you collect the same stuff. We'll scoot over using that nice IG-11, you know, segue. I also picked up the new Star Wars figures that came out for this wave, which was really nice because after that last wave, having to buy like eight to nine figures, and if not the carbonized figures as well, only having to pick up half of a normal wave was cool. Normally people complain about having re-releases in a wave, but this time my wallet was very okay with it. So I managed to find Cara Dune. Probably my favorite figure in that entire wave, and I cannot wait for her to show up in The Mandalorian. Because it's Gina Carano, and she is wonderful. She is a wonderful person. Uh, and she could whip I, your ass. I also picked up the Ceremonial Luke, or the Marvel Now Luke, or Luke Skywalker, or Squawker, or however you pronounce it. If you look on the box, they misspelled his name in two different places. What? Why? No way. Why? Did you not notice that? I have not Come noticed on. that. If you look on the box, I don't have the box with me anymore. On the front of the box, it says Luke Squi uh, Luke Skywalker. There's an extra W. On the side <laughs> of the box, I want to say it's Luke Skywalker. And on the back of the box, it's Luke Squawker. That should not happen. It's misspelled in two different places in big letters. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Uh, I almost picked up. Oh my God, on the promo pictures, it's misspelled. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, and save so that I can put that in the show later. Yes. It says, it says Skywalk Work. Yeah. Somebody's not getting a raise in raise time. <laughs> the other one is Sky who, who Squawker. <laughs> I think is what it is. Squawker, I think is what it was. Like, I'm, I'm trying to find the other image. But, but that's it's, just it's bad. really funny. I, I mean, it's fine by me because all that is is just the trash between me and the toy. But. It was really funny. I I've moved the metal because it came with the metal and ceremonial Luke. Will they will they correct that and later release no. it, and then that package will become a collector's see, item? I'm, what I'm I'm tripping on is it made it into promo pictures. It made it in not only in promo <laughs> pictures, but they didn't fix it by time of release. So oh bizarre. God, it was still was like that, and I giggled really hard. Moving so bizarre. Moving on, I also picked up Wedge from the obviously from that wave as well. Name spelled the, correctly. Riff was really good. What throws me <laughs> off is you Wedge uses the exact same body as Luke does from the when he was the pilot. Yeah, the series one. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out uh, the actor who plays Wedge is in fact an inch shorter than uh, Mark Hamill. Are we really gonna go here? What? He's an inch shorter. Well, no, 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 no. That's not the problem. So. I was watching another review where they were talking about the fact that they always thought that Wedge was taller, and I did too. But, you know, most of the time when I saw Wedge, he was sitting down. So it just, I always imagined that he's supposed to be taller, but I never realized that he's actually shorter. So the body fits perfectly. 
because why re why make a taller version of the body if he's the same height as Luke? So that threw me off a little. Um, but ultimately, I like Wedge. It looks good. It's a good figure. Um, I also picked up the new Star Wars Jaina. Jaina? Uh-huh. Doesn't matter. She's in the new movie. She looks good. She's got a lot of accessories with her. I need to know more about her, but I'm not going to be able to until December. And then, of course, I picked up the Target exclusive C-3PO, which is awesome. He has updated articulation, which is great. So he has more range of movement. And he's got a MERS. He's got eye color cha- uh, color changing eyes. And he's got a man purse. He does. Mers. He is Chewbacca's. He's got his uh, his spares, I guess. He's got everything, it, but like, so, there's so many cool features to this figure because it came with a little extra, uh, the little extra figure, which they didn't charge us extra for, which is great because you know the Disney figures over in their parks, the four pack, which is really just a three pack with two porgs in it. They, they still charged you twenty dollars for the two porgs. It was it was dumb, but the C three PO, the back of the head comes off. So you can get to his circuitry that's going on back there. And in cold, his eyes turn red. And in heat, his eyes turn white. Now that's a great feature. It is a good feature. I like it a lot. And then, of course, I finally finished my Hasbro Wave 3 Power Rangers figure. I've got Lord Draken over here. He looks great. I love him. Worth the wait. Now I just need Wave 4, Wave 5, and more. Even though Power Rangers has won our 2019 best figure line for the year in SCNS's, you know, idea, whatever. And then, of course, I do collect the Fortnite figures for Jazzware. I stopped collecting all of the uh, McFarlane ones other than Peely. Uh, I sold all of my McFarlane ones so I could start collecting the Jazzware ones because I liked the way they feel and were articulated a little better. And I managed to come across while looking for Luke and still haven't found him. I found the Walmart exclusive crack shot, which is basically a nutcracker. And what better timing? Christmas is on its way. So, I mean, crack shot. And that's all I got. Oh, other than this giant self shaded Optimus You're making me tool. making me buy it again. Actually, I got it discounted. How so? Uh, magic of mislabeling. I could only get away with it once. And if I told you how much I paid for it, Jason would not be happy with me. So we'll leave it at well, that. Well, then go right ahead, please. We need to know the, the, the nah, facts. Nah, don't worry about it. Jason, how much is that figure normally? 30 bucks. Okay, cool. We'll leave it at that. Hey, man. How much did you pay for the Don't worry. Don't ask those questions. J- well, don't tell him. Tell me. Oh, okay. That's not bad. I know, right? That's a good discount. How it, much did yeah. he pay? He paid a lot less than you, what how you much paid. How much did he pay? Well, how much does it how much does it cost to buy a hamburger at at uh, Water Burger? I would have gone with five, how much is a four bucks. I was gonna bucks. go with how much is like a foot long at Subway, but no, no. Did you say five dollars? Yeah, about five dollars. Okay, that's then he basically bought a, a hamburger at Water Burger. So, man. <laughs> no, no, Puck fell. You see what you do. But guess who's still standing? All the Migos, Peely, and Peely. Peely will. Peely will be standing after all of us have fallen. <laughs> all right, Bryce, let's move on to you. <laughs> all right, that's a great five dollar pickup, and you and you didn't even have to drive all the way to Whataburger, did you? No, no, that's pretty good. Went to my local Walmart. <laughs> that they is fixed awesome. that real quick after that. Is, that. that is awesome. Well, uh, hot on the heels of your five dollar hamburger transformer or equivalent thereof, uh, I paid just a little bit more, but got a better transformer. Than what you got. Oh, go on. Near. Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen anything that can tackle the toughest fires to save the day? Named Brush Fire from the Rescue Bots Academy. Have you ever seen a glorious Transformer quite like that? Um, I can tell you that I didn't watch a lot of Transformers, and by a lot, I mean any, when I was growing up. See, you probably expected me to go, why have you brought this mediocre child's toy into my home <laughs> but you're not going to get it sir it's okay rescue See, bots is actually a really good show i know i know Jason, it's okay because it is. following that he picked up the newest line of go bots <laughs> this okay. this yeah, is I, I would set fire just to get y'all out of here <laughs> <laughs> this uh this is a robo e vehiculo if you pronounce it the way they pronounce the foreign 
jargon on the back of the box, which I kind of like that. But, it's all the legalese, you know, like yeah. don't put it in mouth, probably winning lottery numbers. Yeah. You know. Shout out to Hasbro. They did a heck of a job on this Rescue Bot series. Uh, my grandson loves these. Absolutely is, loves these things. It looks like Heat Wave, but I guess it's a different character. Brush fire. Oh, Rescue Bots Academy. Different show. Yeah, different show. Uh, and voiced by Steve Bloom, by the way. Yeah. All right. So cool. Uh, why, why do you have that though? Is this just a gift for one one of your your great No, this is this yeah, I'm giving this this is a Christmas gift. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. There we yeah. go. Yeah, he already got a it, bunch of these for his birthday. It's okay. He won't know because he's not 13, so he can't come in here and watch this show. Yeah, the sad thing is, like, it, I mean, he, I don't know if you were trying to get a reaction out of me, but I, I, I am actually okay with kids getting uh, less complicated Transformers. Like, I'm not going to give, you know, an eight-year-old child, here's MP44. <laughs> good, good luck, kid. No, I wasn't trying to get a reaction out of you. I was trying to get praise. Jason, you don't I even was, need I, I was hoping you like praise it. me. You can extend that. You don't even need to give me an MP44 Optimus Prime because wow. I'm going to break that bad boy. Yeah, you will never get any hand-me-downs here. So anyway. <laughs> All right, so, so on, to the, on to the other stuff. You see uh, an unboxed James T. Kirk um, from Wrath of Khan. That's mine. That is yours. But I'm where's, a, his, where's his phaser? I don't know. It was. I don't know. I think he. I think he uh, probably. Uh, probably during one of the shifts where the table okay. fell. It's it, probably on the it, floor. It probably fell into the Starfleet. It's in this room, so I'm good. I, guess. I, I literally see it. It probably okay. fell into the into the Starfleet toilet he was using uh, when he was recording his captain's log. God, I hate when that happens. Yeah, me too. Ew. All right, that so was gross. What he said. Record, well, we're recording his captain's log. You we're sick. Bastard. We're not doing a kid's show anymore, What's so I can true? talk that way. <laughs> Man, those are some hefty duty space shits. <laughs> All I gotta say. All right. So, uh, how many of you in this room that I'm currently in have wanted to have action figures that were representative from uh, the Depression era in Virginia in Gosh. the Blue Ridge Mountains? <laughs> Never. Uh, boy, boy, you had me going. <laughs> I raised my hand. As the joke, and then as you kept going, I lowered it real quick. Uh, Nir, I know you remember this show from the 1970s. Yo. The you, Waltons. You know I don't. Oh, my uh, God. Is that, what, what, what? Yeah, you're, you're, looking at, you're looking at Mom, Pop, Grandma, Grandpa, John Boy, and Ellen. The six figures that were produced in the Waltons line that was sadly uh, cut short. They didn't do all the family members, sadly. Uh, but we do have these six glorious figures. These are uh, mint in box. They've removed. I, re I acquired these recently from my friend Brian Roberts. I mean, slight box damage, but otherwise, you could probably fix that. Yeah, they they, they, they still look really good, even though they have the three ninety nine price tag, homemade price I tag can't on them. Amigo made these. I mean, let's just face it. You're not gonna sell them, so I mean, it's fine. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Um, so now I have John Boy. Uh, and you know, you know, he served in World War II, and eventually became a novelist. Isn't that exciting? Just like so that, that, so that, so if you can just imagine how much that that would have played, you know, with the kids, how well that would have played with, uh, you know, the play value, knowing that he was a novelist. No child wanted this toy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it came the the Waltons line. They did make a truck for it, so that was kind of cool. Okay, this toy line. A kid getting this on Christmas is the same reaction I had when I would get goddamn GoBots. <laughs> like, oh, I wonder what I got. The Walton. What the? I can, I can tell you for a fact. Is, is it worse than tube socks? Uh, honestly, I would use the yes. tube socks a little more. <laughs> yeah, right. Ew. Oh, we're not a friendly. We're not a kid friendly show. I I One, can tell you. It's still no. <laughs> I can tell you. I can tell you for a fact. I never had any one of these six Walton figures as a kid because I never put it on my Christmas list because I never wanted them as a kid. Because <laughs> I never but, wanted them. But as a grown adult, he went and found them. I did because they are excellent for customs and they are they do uh, have a certain charm and appeal for sure. Um, I mean, who doesn't need a grandpa? It's a very manual Walton. show tonight. Trust me. Yeah, I can see that. So aside from that, I want to mention that I didn't get any new Mego acquisitions or new FTC acquisitions because I was very busy out of town. And one of my stops 
was going uh, to a store called Austin's Rock and Roll in Austin, Texas. Ooh. And I browsed uh, FTC product. I browsed NECA, retro cloth product, and many other NECA products that were not retro cloth. And I just want to do a shout out to Aaron's Rock and Roll store. Uh, it's a great store. And he carries a lot of toys. And um, and he has some vintage items as well. And I ended up, ended up getting this awesome Leonard Nimoy Star Trek patch, which I've never seen before. So it's a good I'm profile. Pretty sure it's man. old. Yeah, it's great. I love it. And um, I got some other uh, little miscellaneous items from him. Um, so check have to out. Go visit the store. No, no, yeah. no, no, road trip. Yes, it's a good store. It's a really good store. So that's uh, Toy Dojo like, and like to uh, this store a, in Austin. You and I like to eventually plan road trips. When you know when Bryce goes out of town, he doesn't even think of like sending a text saying, "Hey, man, you free?" <laughs> you know, maybe you want to go hang out with us in Austin. You know, I mean, I might have been free that weekend. Yeah, we definitely need like a Saturday. Just go down to Austin and get, try to trek out early, and let's go. Yeah, it'd be fun. And I also want to mention that I also went to Austin's Books and Comics, Ooh. and it is a massive. I think I've been there. Bookstore, have you? Okay, might, I think I might have. Yeah. I mean, they have back issues galore. Not to mention the new stuff, but they also have a toy section which is large and in charge, and they also have statues uh on display and for sale and um anyway it's a great it's a great store i bought so i bought go down on a saturday get some you know we get down there get some barbecue get some toys come on yeah, back up I'm for sure you, there was one of the <coughs> i mean barbecue. we live in, in case y'all didn't know we live in dallas it's like a what a four hour trip it's not a little far. over three a little over three yeah okay like maybe five if we stop somewhere because i have to pee well you're gonna have, well, to, you're hold gonna have to hold it it's okay, just get me an open can and don't shake the car too much. We'll be fine. Uh, not you know, in my car. Not mine either. <laughs> you are not pissing in my presence. <laughs> Those are your two options. <laughs> anyway, so you're riding in the trunk. So yeah, we got we Jason up, has a trunk. <laughs> hit up a, a couple of stores, maybe do a vlog video. Maybe that's the alternate heads episode of us just traveling in the trunk. We'll cover the news it's while we're driving. Alternate heads on the road. Just alternate have like a dash good. cam set up, right. have another one set up for whoever's in the I back think we seat. can make this work. Anyway, Man, it'd be fun. Right. So, yeah, Austin, the place to go. We got it. We got to get there. Anyway, let's move on to some uh, toy news talk. Bryce, tell us what you found this week. I was going to ask if Bryce could go first, too. Yeah. Well, it's, isn't that working out nicely? As we bring up these images over here that he has provided us. Okay. I'm going to start off with NECA's flashback to 2015. They did a convention exclusive of a Pamela Voorhees and Jason Voorhees. Uh, wow. double set figure that uh, is quite difficult to get on the on the uh, secondhand market now. It's Ooh. very difficult to purchase under one hundred and fifty dollars. Well, okay. So if you if hopefully they re release that one day, but I don't know what the likelihood of that is. But we are getting something kind of like it. Uh, it is the Pamela Voorhees corpse from Friday the 13th, part three, 3D. Uh, we now have in-package photos of that and out-of-the-package photos as well. God, it looks so gross. And Yeah. Well, yes and yes the, and no. The artwork I, looks worse than the... No, actually, the artwork looks really close to the figure. <laughs> Look at this box. So, so that, is the same, that is the same figure with basically the same clothing. If you'll notice, there's, there's you know, it's the same figure they're doing a call back to that figure and it is gruesome but it is it is wonderfully wonderfully done i think i, I think it's a Grant, great sculpt granted the way that they did the sculpt on both the hands and the face makes me excited hoping that they'll one day make a deadpool version i'd buy that one no nah, they don't make it. i said yeah. i would buy it though <laughs> that's saying something since go i still that, don't go own buy it that NECA one two scale deadpool or whatever i still don't own any uh Migos, so you know, but you your know, day is coming. I actually, you're not wrong considering the list you've given me, right? Okay, so keeping with the NECA releases at Austin's Rock and Roll show, uh, rather store, I saw uh, a lot of the NECA releases, including including uh, Sam, the trick or treat oh, boy. character. You can find uh, him at GameStop. Mm -hmm. I saw him pretty it's been a since I watched that movie too. I need to watch. It's, it's a really good film. So the seven inch scale action figure, which stands about four to five inches tall, has a lot of great 
uh, accessories, including interchangeable heads, two jack-o'-lanterns, one that lights up. Yes, I'm interested in that. Interchangeable hand, a severed hand, a trick-or-treat sack, a lollipop, and candy bar knife. So that's pretty cool. I've seen, like the, I've seen the one that doesn't have nearly that much on it in, mm -hmm. in GameStop, but they still charge like the exact same amount that this eBay thing is selling it for, which is ridiculous. So I think it was actually twenty four ninety nine, twenty six ninety nine, something like that. And mm -hmm. I picked it up and went, oh, this is the one that I was going to pick up. You know, I don't collect a whole lot of horror figures, but this is one of the ones I was going to grab. Saw the price and went, not today. And I walked off. Well, you may have to change your mind because I've, if you have you seen the film, <laughs> yeah. it's really good. Like I said, I don't watch a whole lot of horror movies. Yeah, I've said it multiple times, but I have seen the film done by uh, what is it, Kill Count, a mm -hmm. comedy guy that goes over the film. So I've seen. I could say I've technically seen it mm. in the span of you need to see minutes. the real film. No, sorry. All right, all right. Let's get let's get on to uh, Neca's awesome re-release with a new sculpt. Quarter scale, big chap alien. Um, we've got in packaging photos. It's going to stand 22 inches tall. Um, it's got over 30 points of articulation, uh. including double knee joints and a bendable tail. And it's going to it's going to hide and just basically stalk you all night in your home. Dude, I can't thank you. It's going to be awesome. You just helped me decide exactly what we have to get Jason for Christmas. Yes. Man, it's perfect. Yes. And we have to let it out of the box immediately. Well, yeah, we have to open the box to the point where it looks like it ripped out of the box and then hide it probably somewhere in a tree or right. in the toy cave, right. you know. Right. And yeah. we need to get some we need to get some neon slime so it can slime him right away. Uh, you assume that I don't already have like a bucket load of neon oh, slime good. somewhere. Good. Good. So the it's an homage to packaging. Is an homage to the Kenner release of this of of this highly highly uh, questionable release back in the day from 1979. I mean, it was very un untoy like. It's so scary looking, you know, from 1979 from the film. Uh, this had people up in arms back in 1979. They didn't. They did, a lot of people didn't appreciate the alien big chap on toy store shelves back in the day. Uh, but they were this so is, sensitive back then. Uh, they really were. Yeah. Yeah. It was, they, this toy was ahead of its time. And I think it's awesome. I think it's going to be great. Um, on to FTC. Speaking of scary things. Now, this is, this is the one that you're, uh, you've got me attached. Yeah. You're interested. You're interested in the in the Scooby Doo franchise. Yeah, I am too. The the FTC Figures Toy Company does its best work when they're doing Hanna Barbera, and whether it's Super Friends, Johnny Quest, uh, Birdman, all these figures that they that they produce are awesome. It, you'll see that they've they've they produced um, the entire gang, uh, including Ghost Clown. They've got they've got variants. For Scooby and Shaggy when they're scared out of their wits. Yeah, that's the I gotta get the Shaggy. It's it's awesome. And they've they've announced that they're Run, Scoop. Yeah. <laughs> they've they've announced that they're that they're doing um some of the some of the villains. They've already done the creeper, they've already done um um old man blankety blank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Andy, I think you just summed up the entire series right. in a two seconds. Yeah, they've 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 done several uh, the um, and that and now they're going to be doing mo a monster series and they're also going to be doing this uh, red beard. I uh, don't know if it's coming uh, with the automatic jackhammer or the um, or the self propelled sword pirate sword. I don't know if it's coming coming with any of that, but but I I think they're probably going to end up nailing this. Nailing these likenesses, just like they've done with all the rest. Uh, I think, I think the Scooby Doo and the Shaggy are amazing. It's I, I, Shaggy's a must for me. Yeah, Fre Fred looks amazing too. Uh, Fred looks fin look looks phenomenal. He he looks like he jumped right off the screen, and then you made him actually wear like cloth goods for sure. Daphne looks okay. 
Mm -hmm. uh the face sculpt looks great it's just the way that you do that kind of realistic hair almost like doll hair right um those never come out the way that you want them to no matter what you do it's difficult it, it doesn't look bad it's just you know if I, I don't know about the face on it it's just, i'm a big fan actually i don't have a problem with it it looks like the era that it should have been if anything fred and shaggy look a little out of place in comparison to based off of the way that migo has been going i guess you could say i mean i don't own any migo i'm not no one ambassador or anything but <laughs> i can say that uh i'll definitely be picking up shaggy he was my favorite character when i was growing up well i like these figures so much i mean i would like to uh basically get the entire series eventually including you know chart of the robot the phantom shadows all that stuff i, I think i think they're all great uh no word on the mystery machine yet and ftc Ooh. and ftc does make a lot of vans for the dc comics hero series um ftc if you're listening here's how you get bryce's money yeah hey bryce give, give me your money G give me your money put your <laughs> wallet on the table we will do the i mean all you got to do, do is exchange. all you got to do is show me a product photo of the mystery machine i'll probably i'll probably be ready to go let's go That's exactly cool, how i am when, when you cool. show product photos like the product uh, we've talked about this before promotional shots for anything it, it's just it's so close you can feel it and you can feel it in your wallet like i've I'll set it's it like, down i'll do the it's, trade it's like you got a grayscale prototype then you get a full color then you get some packaging images and, and then oh, it, then oh it's I'm, getting, I'm getting that tingle in my fingers yep i need to click and buy <laughs> yeah you either hit pre-order or you don't man i've ordered so much stuff lately because of the, the just i'll tell you about it in a little bit anyway go on Russ. okay all right so the other news item I wanted to share, uh, I am a Migo Ambassador. Uh, please do check out we've Migo Ambassador on Facebook. We've never heard you say that before. I know. Wow. You, yeah, this I'm sure you haven't. Very, <laughs> yeah. When have you been a Migo <laughs> Ambassador? <laughs> He's proud of his title. Since, <laughs> since, about, since about 1978. Um, I just I didn't know it back then, but I but looking back on it, I... He was carrying the torch. I was carrying you. the torch. <laughs> I was saying, hey, guys, have you seen these? Check these out. Little did he know. Right? So, big news is that Migos are coming to Walmart stores this month, and that was announced on November the 14th, just a couple of days ago. Um, and, there, and the details can be found. Um, there is, a, there is a, an actual web page for this. Uh, you can check out to see where your, if your stores in, in, in your cities uh, have Migo uh, from Wave 7, which is going to be an assortment of horror, uh, Star Trek figures, and maybe even Lord of the Rings, it would seem. So they're going to be releasing uh, a lot of the newer figures that are in Targets and online. Um, <clears throat> they, you'll be able to get them at Walmart. Now, I do know from, at, from looking it up, um, 54 different stores in Texas walmarts are going to be carrying these none in dallas none in garland you know it's good it's Why? a good news that uh i don't know it's good news that this stuff's hitting walmart can we get a toys r us again now please no we got to go to houston for that no where is my toys r us in non-flooding dallas okay <laughs> god yeah is right? it, it's in a mall, we, right? We, I have no idea. I don't go to I've Houston. I've been good. I, I just well, okay, I haven't. But I just <laughs> never <laughs> I've again. been to Houston twice within the last year, and none of my trips have ever been pleasant because it's Houston. Even toy like going to Toys R Us still wouldn't probably fix it because of how long it would take to get to Toys R Us in Houston. Now you we've talked about this before, and now you get to finally join in. Dallas hates us when it comes to toy hunting. It's truly been I, I, th this week. Son of a, was it Puck? Puck's actually still on the table. He's lying down. Oh wow! Anyway, I think that was North Star. But anyway, wow, or no, that was Aurora. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, toy hunting has been bad this week, and we'll get into that in a little bit because that's kind of that's another topic. Bryce, right. what have you got else for this for fine? We got Big Chap, which that looks good, by the way. Well, um, yeah, actually, that's it because I'm I'm holding off. I'm holding off on uh, on rumors and other stuff. We're gonna wait till wait till next time because there's not much not much else really right. to talk about. Yeah. Would, would you mind if I uh, cover a little bit here? No, no, go ahead. Because because uh, because I can't believe that I'm the one. I, I thought for sure. I I look through all the pictures that you submitted and I'm like, something's missing. 
why am I talking about the first look at the prototype Midoriya and All Might from Figma, from Max Factory? Look at those shots there. I didn't with the see them. Smash and the smash. Oh, I put them in the messenger comments. Oh, look at those. Look, at, look, look, look. Hey, near. So near, this is. Give me your money. Give me your money. <laughs> so which, which company is this one again? This is uh, Max Factory Figma. And these look really good. Are you sure this is Figma? That is. It's, this looks like Rebel Tech. Uh, oh, that's Amazing Yamaguchi. Sorry. Yeah. So the Amazing Yamaguchi we had teased, Sorry. I didn't get to see these pictures because they never popped up for me. But Amazing Yamaguchi has never really claimed my attention because they've been a little overly oh. big. They seem a little overly complicated. But look they, at the scale. They feel a little cheap. No, no, I get it. It's exactly the way it's supposed to be. Look, and now I'm uh -huh. very excited because uh -huh. I'm looking at them. How are those McFarlane ones? Oh. So McFarlane isn't bad, but the fact that I had to do customization on my Deku made a whole lot of eh, whatever. How about those? Then? How about those? I, I'm going to own them. It's going to happen. <laughs> I've officially already ordered my first Amazing Yamaguchi figure, which was the Harley Quinn that's coming out. And then... But I'm going to have to own these because, you know, that Deku <laughs> looks great. That All Might looks great. I love these effect parts that are on them, too. Man, I have an entire wall dedicated in my room based I can't believe, off of just I can't believe I, I had to. I got to pick up a slack. Anyway, I, I'm moving on to something, you know, that's superior, clearly. Um, we got... Uh, well, we already talked about Bryce's stuff. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> we got some shots of another Masterpiece figure that's come along in the Beast Wars line. The Black Arachnia figure and... Uh, this was this was a really great character on the show. Look at that spider form. It's that is actually a big enough spider that if I was to put it somewhere, which I don't want to risk somebody stomping on it, but it would probably scare the crap out of them if they saw a spider that big. This I'm, figure I'm, is I'm not sorry. for me. I'm, I'm still looking at the huh? All Might. This figure is not for me. I was terrified of the giant spider on Gilligan's Island. Yeah, I think this this is going to get me some scares. Uh, great uh great spider there, there's some you can see parts on the spider mode that were clearly the robot parts and people then oh you see you know what it turns into a freaking spider and then into a robot there's there's going to be some leeway but as far as the robot mode that is perfectly accurate to what the cartoon was okay definitely going to be i mean it's masterpiece transformer i get those it's gonna happen so yeah uh, in other Transformers news, we did get some rumors get, co continuing on with Masterpiece. Currently, we have four of the Autobots from the first movie, but we're missing Ratchet. Well, uh, some leaked pictures did show that a Ratchet is coming. It's nothing, no proto shots or anything like that, but it is a listing for a movie Masterpiece figure, which will uh, complete that series for me, which bring it on. Also, a Masterpiece star screen, which I don't think is needed because they did a really good star screen that falls within that scale. Um, but I'll buy it anyway. So go ahead. I'll, you, give, I'll give you my money. Hey, hey Jason. <laughs> give me your money. <laughs> give me your money. <laughs> um, we did get some in-package shots from the new, from the next series of Transformers, Earthrise, the in the War for Cybertron trilogy, uh, with the hoist, Wheeljack, Cliff Jumper. I have uh, a problem with this. Was that? How are we getting Cliff Jumper before Bumblebee? Because you know, screw Bumblebee. Anyway. That is the next Transformer I will buy is oh, Bumblebee, oh, and that's yeah, it. You ain't getting him. So anyway, uh, Hoist, Wheeljack, uh, more of the MicroMasters line with the uh, Triple Up. And I love these guys because they're hot rods. They're Trip Up and Daddy-O are their names. Those are the best names that's for Transformers funny. ever. And uh, will definitely be making their way into my collection. Also, the uh, another uh, MicroMasters set. Good, good save there, buddy. Yeah. So, yeah, a little bit of Transformers news this week. The one, and ooh, I hate, I hate when I see things like this. Mm -hmm. But you, Hot tell me Toys Ray in her uh, Rise of, or uh, the Rise of Skywalker costume. With, Which, uh, the Rise of Skywalker costume doesn't impress me too much because I, it. I think it's unique. Don't get me wrong. It, it's good. I was excited the moment they announced this costume to begin with for any figure. I was excited. But. It's not too much of a change. Same thing why I was disappointed with Kylo's costume recently, but because it's the exact same other than the mesh together helmet. But Jason, you want to go ahead? Tell, tell me more about Hot um, Toys. I don't want to buy this figure. I hmm. don't. But so these you are some, it. No, 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 no. It comes that, with the droid. That, that is, this, I, and it comes with the deal. It looks really good. This is a fantastic looking figure. And we've always just kind of admired. We don't talk a lot about them because... No. 
money. I own my <laughs> two Hot Toys, and I'm even considering selling one of them, but I will not sell my Rocket. Rocket Raccoon has to stay. So, um, I don't know. I, I see this thing, and it looks wonderful, but going to have to admire it from afar. Anyway. Um, yeah, not for me. <laughs> it looks really good, though. It looks does really look good. good. Um, I can't go down that hole, that yeah. rabbit hole. Uh, also, NECA did get their Kickstarter funded for their uh, their toy box, basically, with the um, splinter that's translucent. It's going to have the light underneath it. I didn't jump on this one. I don't need this one. See, that was the one that you were the most excited about, though. I was, and then, you know, I don't need it. So this one, I may change my mind. I don't know. but for You don't now, have a whole lot of time only, left. I think there's, what, a day? Yeah. and It's only 50 bucks, right? I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm but do you it. know what I, didn't get made? the gremlins one the gremlin one did not get funded like warmers it didn't get funded no no nope. as of friday it was at 16 percent. didn't make it yeah. also wow. and uh finished off by toy news we did get some new images of the sh figure arts freddie mercury the live aid version uh one of my favorite artists actually I, I lo- i'm a big queen fan so man that movie was awesome too i may have to get this just because i mean this is that iconic performance that he did in front of at huh, Wembley with all these people might have to get this one. I kind of passed on the one with the yellow jacket and just kind of missed out on it. I think I can still get it. You, we know a few places that you could pay a little bit more. Yeah. It, so but... um, really good looking figure, good likeness of Freddie Mercury. Uh, I might have to get this. I wouldn't be surprised if Mego did this figure. I wouldn't Actually, either. I wouldn't either. Yeah. That's probably a good figure to do because they, they were, they've already doing, they're already doing kiss. They're doing Alice Cooper. They're doing many things. So. And uh, last bit of news, though, since we talk about things that just got funded. Oh my God, I am watching the last fifteen minutes of the fifteen minutes of the Action Force One Twelve Kickstarter. They have fifteen minutes to go. They are currently at one hundred and thirty thousand. They have met their goal of ninety nine thousand. Yes, they did. Uh, they haven't reached. Now I am backing them for uh, I believe five figures, one hundred and sixty four bucks, which is going to be paid out here in about fifteen minutes. Sadly. I and I'll, I'll I want I I want to get these figures. It's going to be a year until I get them anyway. But the stretch goals didn't get to the figures that I wanted. I wanted. Uh, you did get the bone one though. The bone one got funded. Yeah, he got funded. He was unlocked. Uh, one of the other figures I wanted was the um, the Karak trigger and the Eclipse figures. Those did not get unlocked. So unfortunately, I won't be getting them unless he just announces, "Hey, they're going to be available anyway." Which, hey man, they should make them available anyway. Um, but still not happy. Uh, I mean, I'm not mad, but I wish more people had. I, I've put in as much as I can. Okay, I can't give you all my money. Okay, you and I had this conversation too. While I'm a huge fan of Kickstarter and the way that those particular figures go, I didn't back this one because this one just didn't appeal to me personally. You would think it would because I like more plain looking characters, but this one, something about this one, I just, I just couldn't get into it. Nothing against it. The figures look great. I'm really happy they got funded. I really wanted them to. It was one of those things where we didn't talk about it for some reason. We should have, but I'm I'm, I'm really happy that they did get funded. It just didn't appeal to me. It looks like the the pledges are still coming in. Um, The Swarm figure is the next to be unlocked at 138,000 and not one of the ones I wanted. I wanted Trigger, Carrick, and uh, Eclipse, but I mean, maybe something will happen. Either way, I think they're all there to be delivered in February of 2020, so... Got to, or it's, it's alongside a, our plunderlings. It's a ways away. I thought uh, no, estimate uh, December twenty twenty. So it'll be next year until I get it. Which oh. by then I'll have forgotten. It'll be our last show for Ultimate <laughs> Heads next year, and I'll be like, "Hey guys, remember that Kickstarter?" No. What? <laughs> exactly. So yeah. congratulations to uh, Bobby Vallow over there at the Valiverse. Uh, I hope these actually become a line that we can buy later on down the road. Maybe somebody like Boss Fight wants to pick them up. Or Who knows? Maybe sometime in 2020, Alternate Heads will be producing its own action figure line. No, no. Yeah, I see the pledge is still coming in. Good luck. Um, I'll, I'll give an update in 13 minutes and see what they end at. <laughs> anyway, Nier, what you got this week, man? Uh, don't have a whole lot. One of those things where just not a whole lot of toy news came in this week. So the recently, they we got promotional pictures for the exclusive variants of mcfarland's newest line which was the the doom slayer and Arya stark so doom slayer we already have the original one it's all green he's all big he's all bulky which is great but the doom slayer uh variant is in bronze which i mean looks nice not enough to make me want to buy another one but it looks nice 
while yeah. Arya is dressed the same way as she is during the whole fight with the Night King, where she's all covered in like snow and blood, where stuff was all going to hell. Granted, well, cool. I had a whole lot of problems with that part of the season as well, so I won't be picking this up. Plus, I mean, I don't need another Arya. But, which is funny, because now we got the promotional picks, but they've already been found in Walgreens. Really? Yeah, yeah. They started being found, I want to say, about a week ago. Maybe I a week and a half. Haven't. So, they've already been spotted. So, I mean, we, we I think kinda... I have a love-hate with that. Like, okay, oh, I can go out and get this thing now, but I haven't had time to, like, really... Except that it was supposed to be there. Yeah, just... Because if I had known about it sooner, I mean, I would have still probably stuck with the original Doom guy that we had gotten. I would not have waited to get this version of Arya. I'm going to pass this one up as well. Because Game of Thrones. But at the same time, who knows if Game of Thrones line will even continue. I mean, it's been, what, a year since the last time they announced a Game of Thrones figure? It was just whatever. Interesting. It, it's, yeah, I mean, one that last season really hurt it. But... Then we move on. I, well, I've discussed before that I collect the Jazzwares McFarland, uh, McFarland, the Jazzwares Fortnite figures. Uh, we did get a promotional picture, or someone got a picture at a particular release. I don't remember where they where it came from, but we did get a look at Raven, which looks really cool. I mean, he's one of those humanoid figures that also looks like dark and menacing, and I'm um, I'm all for it. I can't wait for this. I'm just waiting for Valkyrie now, and boring. And now I just got whoa now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Let's talk about your amigos again. <laughs> so, other than that, we started moving forward. We got promotional pictures for the new Mafex Spider-Man Far From Home. I will probably pick this one up, too. This is one of those... I was considering getting the SH Figure Arts, and I couldn't find it anywhere, but now I'm thinking of just going to get the new Mafex Spidey. The only problem is, is, you know, I live in an apartment, and I never stay in the same place for too long. Because of that, I may have to order this one and have it shipped to Jason. <laughs> Just come and pick it up from them. But yeah, it, look, it really, looks good. The proportions are great. The the detail on it looks amazing. The articulation looks great. Yeah, this, I, like, I like the proportions and just the, the, the it, look of the body. Unlike Mar like I like the Marvel Legends one. I think that the way that the SH Figure Arts one looks, they look pretty good. But this one looks like a guy in a suit perfectly. It just, the proportions look great. I'm glad I didn't go and pick up the SH figure arts like I thought because now I'm going to end up having to get the Mafex one and I think that's probably going to be a better sell for me. I like the webbing that comes with this one, by the way. Yeah, it comes with a lot of good accessories as well. Uh, I want to say there might be magnets in it to make it pose. I'm, that could be the SH figure art one that I'm getting mixed up. It doesn't matter. Uh, my next stuff is going to be Storm Collectibles. I don't have anything store collectibles. I know that the next storm collectible figure that I intend to get is the Injustice 2 Superman, but this Doomsday looks, looks terrifying. Good. So, I know that Storm Collectibles has been focusing more on DC villains and they haven't actually focused on actual heroes, which still aligns with Superman from Injustice 2 because he was the villain. But I'm still going to pick up Superman, but they started looking at Bane and Doomsday, and now we officially have those promotional shots for Doomsday. And my goodness, he's big. The he's spikes. bulky. He's terrifying. He looks a little naked, but he's Doomsday. He's wearing britches. He's wearing his, he's wearing his little britches. It's Is fine. Is he 9 or 10 inches tall or what? That's he's, a big figure. It's about 10. Okay, so last I checked. That's a big one right there. He, he's massive. Yeah. And you pay for it. I don't remember exactly how much he is, but it is not cheap. <laughs> and is I, his head too small? No. Okay. Uh, no, I think other... It's, uh, no, it's I don't know. Bryce right. has a point. It's a bit off. But maybe it's because it goes into a point, which I don't Most know. Most Doomsday figures me. have extra spikes on the top of his head, so he does look a little bald. But... Yeah, I it's guess you, I guess you could say that it is a little small, but I mean, whatever. I'm not gonna end up getting it. <laughs> Looks good I, though. It, I'd it does love to, but that. no. Uh, uh, and these are promo shots. Uh, yeah, this yeah, is a pro this is it says this is a prototype. So yeah, yeah it, it could get it. fixed. Hopefully they do. Uh, on the way to Star Wars, GameStop decided to surprise us a little bit with some solicitations for some new Star Wars figures, quote unquote new. First one is the heavy battle droid, which is exactly just a repaint of the battle droid we got originally. With the blaster that comes with the first order trooper. <laughs> Why? I, I don't know. That's a first order trooper blaster. I, I, I don't get it. I'm not going to grab this one. I mean, I like droids and I like collecting stormtroopers, but I 
No. Is this they, the same team that put together Skywalker? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Squire. Skywalker. Good old Sky, yeah, Squawker. Yeah. Let's say it right there. Right? It's Skywalker. <laughs> A Skywalker. You know, I, I know believe. from your side of the table, it's Skywalker, but over here, it's Squawker, okay? Look, there's something here. <laughs> So There's we also liquor bottle. We, <laughs> so I'm going to be passing up on that one because all of the GameStop exclusive figures generally go for a little bit higher price. I think they're twenty four ninety nine as opposed to the normal twenty one yeah. forty nine that we're going to. But I'm going to pass it up for the droid. However, this Jedi Raven figure looks pretty good. Revan, Raven, Revan. Uh, I do know that. I guess in the game you have the option of going between Jedi or Sith. This is a must have for me. I, I love the uh, Revan figure, and um, yeah, he's one of that was one of my favorite figures. Even though I don't know too much about Revan, and there I, might be an unmasked head too. Yes, that is the rumor. There might be an unmasked head with this Revan. I will be getting this one. Yeah. This one I'll definitely be getting. Um, but then out of nowhere, and I don't know who it goes to, but we're also getting the heavy infantry Mandalorian. That looks fantastic. Absolutely, that look at that armor. Have. This this looks like a big bruiser ready to gun you down. I'm excited. Man, it could be the hype because of the fact that we're so into the Mandalorian right now. Mm -hmm. But he's big. He's blue. I'll take it. I think I, we, we like the different Mandalorians we're seeing, I, too. I don't know who it's supposed to go to. But the promo shots are here, which means it could drop any day now. Where? I don't know. But I will find it. Yeah. Unless the, the, he is Walmart, and then I will never see him like Luke. Yeah, good. yeah that looks really good. I love that blue. Just mad. The it's how other they introduced all sorts of Mandalorians now. I was we like, got yeah, we got Bob, uh, we got Django, yeah. But now, we're, we're, with the potential with the new Mandalorian TV series, we saw like other Mandalorians. So it's, I'm excited. I like the variations on armor. That's maybe that's maybe that's the thing. This looks good. Though. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, moving past, sticking with Hasbro, uh, we did get pretty promotional shots from the new Marvel Legends Rider series. So we have Squirrel Girl. <laughs> Who Stop I, laughing. I laugh, but I want it. Yeah. Because I need Squirrel Girl. While I don't care too much about the scooter, I care a lot about the figure and the squirrels. <laughs> the head is a bit off putting to me. It is. It didn't look like this when the first time we saw it, and I don't Ooh. this it, I don't know what it is about the head, but what whatever. Is with this nervous smile she has on her face. <laughs> But, you know, I'm excited for it. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about certain characters. She looks like Cass when we tell an off-putting joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though I'm a Marvel fan and I do like the comics and stuff like that, I did get into it because of the MCU and Iron Man and so on and so forth. So I don't know a whole lot about some of these characters coming up because I haven't kept up with the comics. But I'm really excited to own Squirrel Girl. Oh, I've, I've been I, asking for Squirrel Girl for a long time. So I'm very excited. But we also got Cosmic Ghost Rider, which yes. looks fantastic. I, w I don't know anything about this character other than he rides a giant space bike with balls of energy and on it. And it's Frank Castle. He's Frank Castle, and there's a... And Frank's it, lost it his just, mind. It looks awesome. I need this. I don't know when this is coming, but the fact that we have the promotional shots most likely means that we'll probably get them sometime by the end of the year. I love the paint on the figure and just the... This is the first time we've gotten an actual clear shot of this figure. The first times that we got them, I think they were just actual shots from what, San Diego. And now I'm really excited because we get the close-ups. We get to see the pain. I was always really excited. I wanted to see more about the head sculpt that came from the Ghost Rider itself. Now I've got it. Really excited. I need them now. And that's all I got. It is, all right. that, that is a nice looking design yeah. on Cosmic there. All right. So uh, moving on to things. Now, like we've been complaining a lot about hunting this week. And people are sending me photos. Um like, oh, okay, never mind. I'll go back to that later. Um, but um, we've been complaining about some of the uh, but, um, hunting that's been going on. Why do I have this $50 subscription to Hasbro Pulse, and yet I'm still waiting for figures? I mean, like, I should be able to go there. If I get this membership, order it, and then I, I'm good to go. I, I shared the Hasbro Pulse account with you because there's no read. What do have... you mean you shared yeah, the Hasbro? Yeah, so, so I have all of his information. So I started using Jason's Hasbro Pulse and <laughs> put them down. <laughs> you forget how many uh, you forget how many Transformers are within my reach. <laughs> I just threw the whole thing. So 
but the problem is is that me and you were looking at the Hasbro Pulse and we ordered a lot of stuff off of it. It was one of those things we were excited to have and be able to utilize Hasbro Pulse because of how awesome it was supposed to be. So we pre-ordered everything. We pre-ordered all of the exclusives. We pre-ordered the Power Rangers 2 packs. We pre-ordered other Power Rangers figures. We pre-ordered Marvel figures. And then we canceled all of our pre-orders because we found them in person. But they give you a discount for ordering them in advance through their website, right? No. No. They'll give you, well, they will do free shipping. It was free shipping. For Hasbro that, Pulse members. But that was the thing, though, is certain figures, while there was a discount because, you know, you have inflation when it comes to things like Movie Trading Company or Vintage Stock or, what, at GameStop, you have that increased price. But when it came to, like, dual packs, mm -hmm. they are all the same price pretty much across the entire, you know, online internet community. It doesn't matter. So when we ordered the Psycho Red Ranger and the other Red Ranger, I forget which one it was from anymore, but we went ahead and we ordered those and they said we were coming out in December and Jason and I were just like, all right, December, that's fine. And then we found it over a month ago in GameStop in person and just picked it up, canceled our pre-orders, and now we have them. And the Hasbro Pulse ones still haven't shipped. Now, while complaining about this, I did think about it. If Hasbro did undercut brick and mortar stores, brick and mortar stores would stop buying from them. It's true. But, but that just means that the what we're paying for, like, because if I were to actually go out and buy it as well, we would only probably sign up. What is it? Is it the fifty dollars a month or a year? It's a year. So it's not that bad. But you're basically only using it for the exclusives from New York and San Diego, and that is about the only thing that we used it for. So and except for when I tried to pay for the the Hulk on Amazon, and they tried to screw me out of it. God, I was so angry. Sixty seconds to go. For <laughs> so like with amazon i, I pre-ordered it and it was supposed to be here last monday and it still hadn't showed up and i called them and they said oh yeah we don't know when we're getting that in so um have fun with that and i was like oh no 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 so we went up the chain and it basically went to okay we're canceling your order we're going to give you 50 dollars worth of credit so you can buy it third party so that way we can just go ahead and get it taken care of so amazon took care of me but the point is, is I could have avoided all that hassle if I had gone through Hat of Pulse, but the problem is, is that I only had a 60 second window to buy my figure because with those exclusives, they make it so difficult to buy those exclusives off Hasbro's Pulse because everyone and their mom wants those toys too. So I, I don't know. It's it, it. I've kind of questioned like, was this worth it? I paid 50 bucks for this membership and I don't think I've gotten any use out of it yet. Now, granted, I did try to order uh, Draken off of there, but he sold out. So I ended up doing it uh, through GameStop for the pre-order. I'll find him. I know I'm going to find him before GameStop fulfills this order because that's just the way the world works. It, it's I swear, if I order something, it will appear on the shelf. Right now, that Draken is on the shelf over my target, right across the street here from there. Mm. It's there. Now that I've bought it, it's there. <laughs> GameStop and Think Geek, they they've got some weird delivery strategies, don't they? So. Speaking of delivery, uh, fans have delivered. Valiverse has ended. Six hundred eighty-seven backers, one hundred and thirty thousand eight hundred and sixteen dollars. I will now be charged for this, <laughs> <laughs> and just forget about it. So me. we're gonna go on a Target run and find Draken, right? Probably. So GameStop is, is smart though, right? For getting their merchandise ASAP and putting it on the shelf. That's the thing. They have though, to have they, some sort of deal. They don't but, but also those same Power Ranger figures are being found in targets, not ours, but they are being found. It, was that the notification for you just got charged? No, that's notification. Um um those uh Power Ranger figures I sold, uh a friend of mine bought one. <laughs> he said he's like Aka Red has a good has a has a new home. So I'm like, okay, I'm glad. I'm glad the the person that that I, you know, you, you, I know that he's in good hands. That, that, that right. matters to me. Yes, that matters to me as well. But it was one of those things where with Hasbro Pulse and the way that we try to go ahead and buy those figures and the same thing with GameStop. It's just GameStop doesn't generally put figures out early. It's one of those weird things where they have it on their website and it's supposed to hit their like their warehouse for a specific time. Like when I went and ordered the Bro Thor figure wave, mm -hmm. I was waiting to get it from GameStop. They like still it, don't have those on shelves either. Yes, they do now. Apparently, in certain places, Bro Thor Wave is starting to hit GameStop. Problem is, they were supposed to hit GameStop early September. 
I was specifically waiting until September, and I was like, okay. I, throughout all of September, I, I had my finger on the trigger. I was like, okay, it's supposed to come out this day. On the day that it was supposed to come out, I went there. Nothing. When I was asking about it, they still were like, no, it's not going to be here. And then I looked at it, and they pushed it back by a month. And I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'm, I'm tired of waiting because I had waited so long. That's why I ordered it off of Entertainment Earth and got all of my figures long before GameStop ever got theirs. So apparently they're starting to hit now. So in certain cases, hey, look, we have the new Power Rangers 2 pack over four months before Hasbro says they're supposed to come out. But then it's like, oh, but we have Avengers three months later. It doesn't make sense. I it's so hard to be a toy collector yeah, right I, now. I, my bro Thor needs two more figures, so he, has, he actually has legs. And I've gotten <laughs> these figures in the most just what's the in the most ass way possible. Unorthodox. Pick, now, granted, I they are just put uh, them in a bathtub. I have you seen don't need them, legs. I saw them at um, a movie Vin- trading company. Yeah, but they're twenty five dollars a pop, and put they're normally over his legs. I don't want to pay twenty five bucks. However, I went over to our <laughs> local store, Dallas Vintage Toys, and they had them. They had a uh, Vision for twenty five dollars. I would rather pay that money to Dallas Vintage Toys than Movie Trading Company because they're a they're a different kind of business. Exactly. It's just, but one of the things about it is I'm willing to pay tw- an extra five dollars for a figure if I get them super early. Like Movie Trading Company, I got all of the Wave Three of Power Rangers figures from Movie Trading Company. Yeah, they should have been twenty bucks, and technically I could have gotten an extra figure for the extra amount that I paid for them. But I got them now while people are still trying to hunt them down at Target. That's the thing. Okay, yeah, that was uncalled for, but whatever. I, I still have all of my... my... you call them people? <laughs> <laughs> I still managed to get all of my Power Rangers figures early, but at the same time, it, you know, I technically could have waited because now that I have them early, I have to wait because Power Rangers Wave 4 is not going to come out until March or in Vintage Stock's case, probably January. You never know. Mm. So, yeah, the, the, the hunt continues for my um lightning collection and some legs for my bro thor but i don't i when are the when are these figures going to be available on hasbro pulse because i probably never at this point they sell out so quickly i mean remember when the pink ranger went up it was sold out for a while then you managed to get in there only to find out that you found one literally the same day and then canceled your pre-order <laughs> that's why i need to go ahead and get they need to be available for you to buy online so i can find it out in town that's right. how, that is the way of the world <laughs> works. The works. I accept it. Fine, but make it so. I mean, I mean, I like you know. I, I know how you like to go toy hunting all the time. I, all not the as time. much as like, I used to. Like, but but you go like at least what a day, one or two days a week. I you're out there the way that I have to. My job, particularly right now, has me on the road most of the time. So when I'm out there, if I every so often, if I find a couple minutes, I'll stop at a Walmart or two so lately with luke i was really hitting up just two walmarts at a time and then doing the rest of the day was my job but even so because of the span of that amount of time i managed to hit up 15 walmarts and it's the same thing with just no so at, i enjoyed toy hunting a lot when i was when i didn't have a job that did that yeah because you know you would dedicate a day or just like a couple hours and you would go to the stores nearby and occasionally you would find something that was great. Mm-hmm. But now that I have all this extra time, toy hunting has become a little bit more soul sucking because mm-hmm. we subscribe to all of these different people on Instagram and YouTube. And they're like, Hey, look, we found Luke instantly. And it was like a month ago that that Luke we, was found. We hunted some Walmarts. I have, if the last time I checked, I have hunted about 20 Walmarts yet to find one. Wow. And I left determined to find one because I was out and about yesterday. So I was like, I'm going to check every Walmart I come across. Nothing. No. So it's one of those things where just based off where we are, it's a little tough to be a toy hunter right now. because, And that's one of the things that I, we mentioned earlier is the fact that we started ordering stuff online. Because of the fact that I didn't want to go hunting out and about for all of these figures, I started ordering so much stuff to just come to my apartment instead. Mm-hmm waiting a couple of days like the like the hulk the alpha flight the power ranger dragon instead of hunting it at movie training company yeah, i just I'm asked them oh, i'm sorry Go ahead. i just asked them to send it to me or certain figures i still go out and hunt but still like certain cases like this i have them ordered to me i have now officially ordered so much my apartment complex sees me coming looks for a package says we either we have it or we don't and see granted i like the thrill of the hunt i do like going out and finding things for a long time ordering online was like accepting defeat 
But, it was. But with, because you also couldn't tell what condition you were going to get. Exactly. Right. You always take that risk. But with Amazon being able to get it to me within a day, it's intoxicating. And when other services can't do that, I'm like, well, what are you good for? Right. <laughs> at least when I give in, at least I know, you know, okay, fine, I'm ordering online. So you got the Amazon Prime free shipping? Oh, yeah, I've got that. Idea. Yeah, me too. So I don't. I, I was the same way. Uh, you know, the thrill of the hunt was. Um, was was exciting you know it, it, it back in the day before before the internet really allowed me to oh, yeah. order we just that had was to the drive. only way we had to drive <laughs> around now granted um i built a large collection that way and ended up selling a lot of stuff because i didn't because i decided I didn't, I didn't want everything that i that i bought but i guess what i'm getting at is the thrill of the hunt is still is still there but i don't hunt like I used to, because oh, yeah. like Jason, like yourself, you know, it's easier, it's easier to order online, but, um, I really enjoy finding stuff out in the wild, just like I did when I was a kid. I, it's, it's fun to see it on the peg. It's fun to decide, uh, you know, it's, I, it's, it's like a game, which, which one of these do what do I want to take home? And then I'll walk out the store and pretend I can't, I can't buy I can't. I don't have enough money to buy them all, and then I'll walk back in the store and, and grab the rest or, of the stuff that I actually. Or you do walk into, right? You walk into that that big box store, Target, Walmart. You find the remnants of the case that that thing is in, and you know there's another one around the corner. The hunt is on. Yeah, tally ho, boys! It, it was a lot of fun doing the hunt. Like we, there yeah. were moments where I think the hunt comes down to when we were kids. Like when I was a kid, and my parents would take us grocery shopping. It was time to go grocery shopping. And because you didn't, weren't in the toy community as invested as you could have been, but you were still starting out, you went into the toy section. You were like, this is a thing? I could own this? And then you would beg your parents. And if they said yes, then great. You got to go home with something. If you didn't, you had to wait till Christmas and blah, blah, blah. But now that we're older, we still got to go out and do that hunt. So, And that's what helped us get into a lot of good lines. For example, like Marvel Legends. I Before I collected Marvel Legends, I collected three-quarter inch scale marvel figures because those were really popular at the time that's what i could afford and marvel legends were didn't look like i wanted them to yet so the first set that i ended up getting was rocket raccoon from the new guardians mcu wave and i was like this is great and that's when it started and i started collecting and hunting and i thought that was a lot more fun because mm -hmm. at that time because of how much i you know made i could if i found one i really wanted i could take that one home and then i would wait a week to go get another one but now there's so many different toy collectors out there plus then you have the it gets a little more depressing because then you have like the people who are swapping the figs like you i swear if i see somebody doing that you're ruining it for everybody i i keep seeing it i went recently and yeah, but i want to i want to catch somebody in oh i want to catch somebody in act and and video it on the phone and then well you and then and then say um have you ever heard of a have you ever heard of a uh mystery shoppers or 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 um, uh, security in disguise. I'd like you to come with me. That's the whole problem with the swap the figs parts, though. Is yeah, sure. Come with us. You can't necessarily do back. it anymore because you you do the swap. It's a lot easier because people don't check. So no, no, it's they don't not, care. Yeah. So what someone's doing is they buy it, then they swap it out at home, come back, say it's defective, and then they're like, "Oh, okay, we'll put it back on the shelf." And granted, there is there is a part of me that goes, if the store doesn't care. You mean well, uh, okay? It's a it's a double edged thing. If the store doesn't care enough to enforce this policy, why should I? But then again, you're robbing me from buying a figure that I possibly wanted. My best example Not to mention is the kids. When I went to go buy Crack Shot here, and I went to a Walmart, they had eight Marvel Legends on the pegs. Out of those eight, six of them had missing Build a Figure pieces, replaced by someone who cut up Mister Sinister's cape. And put two strands of Mr. Sinister's cape in where the Build-A-Figure was. And Walmart just took it back. Which means six of those figures out of eight can't be purchased or unless you just really want it. It's That's some trifling shit right there. It's, 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 mm, it's really frustrating because then you can't focus on the hunt and it kind of down hearts. Because that was one of the big ones is when I was hunting the King Shark Wave for DC Multiverse. Everywhere I went, I would find multiverse, but then I would find one that had a missing, uh, you know, collect and connect piece, which didn't help me because I wanted the King Shark. Well, that's another thing. We can get into fig swapping and, and, you know, 
hopefully those people, you know, die of pee pee cancer. Seriously. That's seriously wrong. I, I hate that them is... that I hate them that when they do that, but yeah, and, and I said it. I don't care if anybody if well, I fix swap, we'll go to hell. Go to hell and die. Really? <laughs> I hate fix swappers. I, it is so unnecessary. Bye. You're ruining work, the fun work, for everyone. Work a couple of extra hours overtime if that's what it takes to buy. Yeah, to you buy can't the afford figures. your hobby. Buy you know? buy your buy the figures the way they're supposed to be bought. Don't be. Cheap. And if you're buying it just for the build a figure piece, then just go on to eBay and sell the figure. But so anyway, uh, but back to yeah, our um, our online service is really worth it to us. Yes, we get a lot of things online, but I still like going out to do the hunt. Especially when if you go this out with, shit is available. Especially when we go out not looking for anything in particular. Like yeah. if we go and do this Austin trip, it'd just be us going out to look for something, not having oh. anything in mind. It's just going. I know we said that trip would take just over three hours, but we're going to stop at every Walmart <laughs> Target on the way, which is going to add two hours to this trip. A lot of time to the trip. It's a re- it's a weekend trip for a reason. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna check them at least going all the way there. Like somebody's gonna have their phone open. Like, hey, there's one coming up. <laughs> Take a right. Take a right. Because <laughs> there's quite a few along 35 God along that. Stretch. Damn it, Jason! Don't park in groceries. You gotta park by Home and Pharmacy. You know me and my wife go through that every time we go to Target. <laughs> every time we go to Target, because I want to park on the side that does not have groceries, because it's just a little bit close to the it, toilet. It's second. just instinct at this point. Like I will park <laughs> if I have to go for groceries. That if I'm going exclusively for groceries, then yes. But most of the time, even if I'm going exclusively for groceries, I have to park in home and pharmacy so I can take a little detour and walk to the toys and then go find what I want. So if, if I'm driving, it, now we do it just to spite each other. If I'm driving, we park on that side. <laughs> if she's driving, what's worse is when we're leaving and she'll go in the direction of grocery and I'll let her go off for a little while. For, where are you going? <laughs> Six feet away. And she's like, God. <laughs> All right, guys. So anyway, let's go ahead and start uh, shutting this down. Of course, if you want to follow any of us, you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JasonTheX. You can follow me on Instagram at the Near Plasma. You can follow me. I'm going to wake up now. <laughs> we, we are recording this I'm a little later. Than He's been working. So. Yeah, I've worked all day. Um, you can follow me at Bryce Culver on Instagram and Facebook and at and at Trapdoor Toys on Instagram. Uh, we also, we announced it already, but SCNS is on winter break. Season 8 is over. Oh, yeah. So there will be no Super Cool Nerd Show. Uh, alternate heads. Well, we're getting, we, we talked about this. We're getting a lull during the holidays uh, yeah. for toys. So it's a good time for us to take a break as well. So we can enjoy our family. Enjoy our family time. Not, I mean, we'll still be we'll still be updating with stupid videos. Yeah, not, not everything's going to be gone. Alternate heads will probably still have some fun little videos here and there. Uh, anime vlogging. TV is still going, but we're also putting a lot of new effort into the new show we recently announced called Nerds of Coffee, which will come out next year. A little bit of a gear upgrade as well. So yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you for joining us for another talking toy with the boys here, and uh, yeah, hopefully we take a road trip. We can do a little video on that too. So, all right, guys. Always stop and smell the plastic. We'll see you later. Live long and prosper. What's for dinner?